Good evening, and welcome to worship here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Miles Hopgood, and it is a delight to welcome you to worship here on this, the Feast of St. Mark, and also, coincidentally, my installation. A few notes on the service. Everything you need should be in the bulletin that you received on the way in. Parts that someone else will be saying will normally be in plain text. Parts for you to say will normally be written in bold. This will also be a service of Holy Communion, uh, and there'll be more instructions on its reception just prior to its distribution. As you are able, I invite you to rise in body or spirit and to face the baptismal font as we prepare for worship with a thanksgiving for baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Water, water, we praise you, O God, for water. The Shamanee Creek and Springfield Lake the rain that nourishes animals and plants, the water for drinking and bathing. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for our water stories, a flood that cleansed the earth, the sea that drowned the enemy, a river that healed leprosy. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We remember the waters of Jesus, baptized in the Jordan River, calming the Sea of Galilee, drinking from Jacob's well, healing at the pool of Bethsaida, washing the disciples' feet. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for this font, for you breathe into this water to wash away our sin, and birth us each day into your peace and joy. We praise you, O God, for baptism. We praise you, O God, for baptism. O God, you are the ocean sustaining this earth. O God, you are the river saving us from death. O God, you are the fountain granting us health and well-being. We praise you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen and amen. amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have enriched your church with Mark's proclamation of the gospel. Give us grace to believe firmly in the good news of salvation and to walk daily in accord with it. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 7 to 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, 
who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices together, they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful, for I have taken refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until this time of trouble has gone by. Send from heaven and save me, rebu rebuking those who trample upon me. You will send forth your love and your faithfulness. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. steadfast, O oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. I will give thanks to you among the peoples, O oh Lord. I will sing praise to you among the nations. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the A reading from 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verses 6 to 11 and 18. As for me, I am already being poured out as, I, as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Damas is in love with this present world and has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Damasia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to St. Mark the Evangelist, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism for the repentance of the, for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all of the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I've baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Now, when Pastor, when Pastor Hopgood, Pastor Miles, you go with Pastor Miles or Pastor Hopgood? Pastor Hopgood. When Pastor Hopgood told me that he had selected the feast day of St. Mark the Evangelist, he decidedly also told me the verses. And just as you've heard with your own ears, we've stuck with the first chapter, so that means I'm not getting to read all 16 to you. People of God, sometimes you just got to do what your pastor tells you. It's good to listen to him. He's smart. But since it is the feast day of St. Mark, I do hope you'll, you'll pardon me that I'm not really going to stick with that text. Sorry. I'm going to give you the whole kit and caboodle here. Because I don't think that St. Mark wrote his gospel to be read in small chunks, the way we so often do in church. When St. Mark was called by the Holy Spirit to write this gospel, he was called to write it with all of his creativity, with all of his passion, with all of his wisdom, and with all that he received from his Lord. And he so did it in a really interesting way. A way that makes most scholars think that it was meant to be memorized and recited all at once. We can tell that from the choices of what stories it tells, the patterns it follows, the fact that there are little memorization tools throughout it, and he has this very particular flavor and very particular intention. He wrote it so that you, the listener, will remember it. So much so that you want to tell it yourself. Why, though? Well, in St. Mark's Gospel, we find that the only people who quote-unquote get him are those who are threatened by him. The demons in Mark's Gospel all call him the Holy One right away, and they scorn him, and they fear him. The politicians, Pilate, Herod, and their courts, and the religious elites all understand him in part. They all see something's going on here. And they too are threatened by him, and they will do everything in their power to dismiss him in front of others, and ultimately have him killed. Indeed, kill him. But more than that, Jesus is misunderstood, he is disobeyed, and he is disappointed by his followers. 
Even John the Baptist, who Jesus really likes, explicitly recognizes that he himself is unworthy. The people who are most equipped to understand Jesus, who you would expect would really get him, fail to recognize the most important things about him. Even the theoretical first witnesses of the resurrection in Mark's gospel, the women who came to the tomb, run away frightened at the word of the angel. And our oldest manuscripts of Mark end in fear. Chapter 16, verse 8. Look it up. It's a good book. At the end of Mark, it looks like the bad guys have won. The high priests and the Pharisees got rid of a rival religious leader. Pilate is just shaking his head and tutting and wondering what all this meanness was about. His, uh, the soldiers have taken his stuff. Everyone could have stopped this if they had only tried, it seems. And his, apo his apostles are scattered, having betrayed, denied, and abandoned him in his hour of need. It looks as though the gospel has been silenced. No one will hear about the resurrection because no one will share the news of the resurrection. The imperishable message of salvation looks like it's gone. That's Mark's choice. No one will share the gospel except you. You just heard it. You have it right in front of you. You have it before you. And you have a gift, a holy gift, that not one of Jesus' earthly disciples had. It's not Miles. Don't worry, I'm getting to him later. <laughs> you have a gift. The gift of St. Mark's hindsight. The gift of his hard-earned wisdom. None of the disciples had that. But you do. When all of these people who should have known better are running away, you can proclaim the resurrection to those who need it. You can proclaim the forgiveness of sins to sinners. You can proclaim a vindicated Lord who worked miracles of healing without charge, exorcism without condition, grace upon grace, out of boundless love and compassion. And you get to know it's the real deal. Mark wasn't lying. Now, later editions of Mark have a couple of tacked-on endings. Most of them are repetitions of what happened in Matthew and Luke with a little extra spice of Jesus yelling at the disciples for not showing up where he promised he'd meet them. But the message remains the same. The Holy Ghost called Mark to write this gospel sometime between 60 and 75 when Jesus' earthly disciples are dying and half of them went off to places like Ethiopia and Armenia, Azerbaijan and India, and we have no surviving correspondence between them and the Mediterranean churches. We don't have a lot of ancient stuff. But they were not uniquely, and certainly not solely, equipped to share the gospel. And you, by the Holy Ghost's promise, by the baptismal promise, by the bread and by the wine, you have been given that great holy spiritual gift. A gift of something to believe in. A gift of hope. A gift of truth and life. And you are no less equipped than Peter or Paul or James or Jude, Lydia, Junia, Mary, all of them. To St. Mark, no one's better than you. Repent and believe, because the kingdom of God has come near, and the proclamation rests with you. No one gets to live out your faith but you. You've got it. 
even with our failings, even with our shortcomings, even with our struggles, God has given us all we have and all that we will ever need to be a light in the darkness, to proclaim hope in hopeless places, to give courage to troubled people, and God will plant the fruits of the Spirit for all hungry and parched places. God's doing that work by word and sacrament with a different kind of gospel. Every time we hear someone try to tell us a gospel that goes against what we've come to know from Jesus, every time we get a kind of gospel that avoids or ignores real suffering or real costly love, a kind of gospel that is not about the forgiveness of sins, but is about the preservation or restoration of power, every gospel that avoids sorrow and death, people of God, you hear this sort of thing every day, you have been given a gift. Mark's hindsight, which calls you to proclaim something else, something better. You can tell it, because St. Mark wrote it down for you. It's right there. It's quite memorable. He put a lot of work into it, and it's meant for everyone. Jesus is risen. Share the good news. Don't count on someone else to do it. You've been given the best God has to offer and good news to give away. And in giving it, you'll find yourself knowing it even more. And if that weren't enough, good Shepherd Lutheran Church, now you've got my dear friend, the Reverend Dr. Miles Hopgood, by your side. Now, I can tell you a lot about Miles. I've known him and I've nerded out with him about Bible stuff, theology stuff, board game stuff for almost a decade now. But the most important thing I can tell you about him is that he loves the gospel. He will talk to you about Jesus all day long. You'll have to stop him. He'll give it to you without condition, without reservation. He will proclaim it. He is blessed with a mind and a spirit of discernment that notices and draws attention to Mark's curious gospel. Indeed, the Holy Spirit. This living faith in a God who shows up in places where, in, in those places that all of those of this world will seek to hide this gospel that, will be try, will, that others will try to prevent or destroy, Miles will just keep drawing your attention to it. Miles will keep discerning what's true from what's false. And he knows, just as Mark knew, that Jesus will not be stopped and that forgiveness and reconciliation are the way of God. He'll tell you all about it because it's his calling to give you something to believe in with every ounce of his creativity and wisdom and endurance so that you can speak too. And just as St. Mark before him. And the Holy Spirit, Spirit will guide him and has guided him here so that we can believe together. People of God, pray for him. Pray for Caleb. Pray for Felix. Pray for Alma. Bless them with listening ears, open hearts, and a hunger for God's peace, for divine justice, for a welcome to outsiders, and the forgiveness of sins. Inspire him with your love for Christ and live into nothing less. For by his word and by his promise, Christ lives in you. The words he gives you are the words you have to share with him. Live into nothing less, because there is nothing better. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.
United by the good news of Jesus Christ, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having been authorized by the church to install Miles Hopgood, our co-worker in the gospel, as senior pastor, I now ask for certification of this call. After careful deliberation, we of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church have called Miles Hopgood to serve as a minister of word and sacrament in the position of senior pastor. I present Pastor Hopgood and this letter certifying his call. may be seated. A reading from John. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. There, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. A reading from 1 Timothy. Set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Attend to the public reading of Scripture. To exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy, with the laying on of hands, by the council of elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourselves to them, so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Pastor Hopgood, in the presence of God and of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God through the call of the church? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions of the Lutheran Church? Will you carry out this ministry in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace? I will, and I ask God to help me. Trusting in God's care, will you love, serve, and pray for God's people? Nourish them with word and sacraments and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you give faithful witness in the world 
that God's love may be known in all that you do. I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Please rise as you're able and body your spirit. People of God, will you receive Pastor Hopgood as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard him as a servant of Christ and as a steward of the mysteries of God? Will you pray for him? Will you help and honor him in carrying out this ministry? In all things, will you strive to live together in peace and unity of Christ? We will, yes, God to help us. Pastor Hopgood, the office of senior pastor is now committed to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You have been called to be among us, to baptize, to teach, to forgive sins. You have been called to be among us and proclaim the good news. You have been called to be among us to preside at the Lord's Supper. People of God, I present to you Pastor Miles Hopgood, your senior pastor. Let us welcome him in the name of Christ. United with the great cloud of witnesses throughout the ages, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, our salvation and hope send out messengers from your church who announce peace, bring good news, declare salvation, and tell of your majesty. We pray for our bishops Elizabeth and Patricia, and for all ministers and people. Be present and visible among us as we are gathered and sent, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Sustain wild beasts, the bees, and all living things in their natural habitats. Nurture the delicate balance of the ecosystems so that life thrives in healthy ways, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Judge the world with righteousness and amplify the voices of people who long for your justice. Raise up advocates to accompany and speak on behalf of those who are persecuted or otherwise denied their dignity. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Create re refuge for all who are lost, worried, and burdened with many things. Protect and be merciful to those who seek you and deliver them from their distress. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. You reveal yourself not through words alone, but also through music, visual arts, dance, and other forms of communication. Bless people with your creativity and use their many and various gifts to make yourself known. Lord, in your mercy. Ever-living God, strengthen and sustain pastors and bishops, especially those gathered here today, that with patience and understanding, they may love and care for your people. 
Grant that together that they may follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Through the witness of Mark and other writers, editors, and translators, we are blessed. We thank you for all who have shared your word of hope. Shape our lives to embody your word and to proclaim your salvation for all. Lord, in your mercy. In the company of your saints, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your eternal mercy and love, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who after his resurrection sent forth the apostles to preach the gospel and teach all nations and promised to be with them even to the end of the age. And so with Mark and the glorious company of the apostles, with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for creating us to live together in unity and for forgiving our failures in following your call. Blessed are you, Abba Father, for sending your beloved Son and for adopting us to be your family of sisters and brothers. Lord, we receive this good news. Lord, we receive this good news. Blessed are you, Sovereign of Mercy, for establishing your kingdom in Jesus the Messiah. He healed the sick, and welcomed women and men, and taught the commandments. Blessed is he, the Son of Man, who became a servant of all, and who overcomes the might of Satan until the end of time. Lord, we believe this good news. Lord, we believe this good news. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We remember the good news of his life given for us, his death on the cross, and his rising from the tomb, as together we profess the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. By the power of your spirit, hidden in the mystery of Jesus, reveal yourself to us here, hidden in this bread and cup. Do not forsake us, but save us in the time of trial. By this mystery of Christ's body and blood, cast out our demons, cleanse our hearts, and strengthen our service toward all in need. Lord, do not ever forsake us. Lord, do not ever forsake us. To you, Lord God, the Blessed One, and to your Son, coming at the end in glory, and to the Holy Spirit, descending on us now like a dove, be all our praise and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In a moment, at the invitation of the ushers, you'll be bidden to come down the center aisle. Cupped hands will receive the bread placed into them. If you wish to receive only a blessing, you can simply cross your arms across your chest. You'll then be invited to break to either side, depending on which side of the sanctuary you're sitting on, to receive the bread, uh, wine, which will be poured into individual cups, which you can collect uh, courtesy of the ushers before returning to your seats down the side aisles. There are gluten-free and alcohol-free things. If you need them, simply let me know. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. I'm going to take a moment just to thank you all for coming here tonight. It's truly a gift, especially my colleagues and those from other congregations who traveled here to be with us today. It is really a joy uh, to see you all and to celebrate this moment with you. Uh, a reminder that there is a fellowship hour after uh, this service today. You can, when you go out the main doors, cut to your right down the stairs, and it will lead you there. Or you can go a much more circuitous route that I have not yet mastered, so cannot promise you will get you there. But there, can, there is another way. If you go the long way, just you're on your own. That's the faster way. I know that much so far. Now receive this blessing which comes from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Now we'll go back.